if the Drac Theater were not such a public loss. Yeah. It's like we, you know, I get it. People on Twitter were very, very happy about Drac Theater, but for so many on- audiences, they're like, no, I, I want to play the big Draconid dude. That that seems way cooler. Um, I mean, even, you know, pe- people I know uh, in life who are like, hell, trying to say words without like, not being worried about the thing you're going to say, but being worried about somebody's interpretation of what you're going to say because everything's oh, in bad oh, faith. Oh, the problem where you're not allowed um, to say anything because people assume the worst because everyone's evil and violent. Okay, basically all of my gay as hell progressive friends. <laughs> yes. to, say, to say it pretty cleanly, um, Loads of them have like seen me playing. They're like, they see a dragon and they're like, can I be dragon it? No. So that that's the weird thing. Like, I, I think even the thing with the drag theater missing, like that's not just, um, you know, because a lot of people kind of chalk that up to, oh, it's the, the, the liberal scalies from Twitter. They've taken the game over. Ah! Right? There's like a bunch of, you know, I say like the mass wow people, mm-hmm. like, and I think it's super, the, the super doomers. The super doomers are, are always the people talking about the, you know, the, the liberal scalies. Um, well, funny enough, even like, you know, even the liberal scalies don't like them. <laughs> yeah. The liberal scalies maybe would actually just like a big, very fucking strong yeah. beefy boy. A dragon like, yeah. um, yeah. So like, that's just another example of like, mm. that was a creative misfire. I, I, you guys clearly did not, uh, do this for your audience. Uh, fair enough, but. That was definitely a, you know, that in terms of getting lapsed people back, that is not the way. Um, yeah, that's the. And, and I guess that's the thing with Dragonflight. It's a, it's a really good expansion, um, and yeah. it probably doesn't help to like. I don't know if evoke. I think preservation is pretty great. I think but. preservation's really good, but I think preservation, as it is with a lot of like healers and like the, it's kind of the same way they made monk, where there's a little bit of complexity to the healing side. It's like fun, but it's not for everyone. I think, uh, and then devastation's just yeah. So it's, it's like it's that with devastation, which means it's like okay, your your new class is basically just a healer, and your new race is basically just a healer, and maybe it turns out that actually severely limits its appeal. It. It definitely does. Uh, yeah, I mean, and like, course, yeah. I mean, almost definitionally because that slices. Yeah, it's like it's down the yeah. amount of people who you know would potentially be interested. Yeah, I, I would need to look at the stats, but I'm fairly sure you look at like the amount of DPS versus healers and tanks, and you'll just see DPS, healers, tanks, and that's a case where you have to. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, so even I don't know how much casters are prepared over melee by the average person. I would assume the vast majority of classes are like, I know Druid's one of the most popular classes. It's like Druid, Paladin, Warrior, probably, probably the top three I'd imagine. Like by that, we're talking across everyone who's played the game. Yeah, because those are like the most, um, the most I guess gen. I don't say generic because they're obviously not generic, but they're the most like uh, pliable fantasies where everyone can fit their head into them more. It's like what's a warlock? Oh, that's a bit more niche. Obviously, it's cool. It's well realized but it's just a little bit more niche in terms of how you feel about it than big person, two two-handed weapons, smack things hard, or paladin, which is everyone knows a paladin. Yeah. And then druid is, there was a druid in the in the in vanilla cinematic and they turned into a cat. And also you can travel for him without uh, cast time from out. And you're like, I'll have that please. So I think it's like, that's the, it's death by a thousand cuts in that way. Where it's frustrating because in every other way, they uh, like they didn't get cut. In so many of the ways they uh, have traditionally failed, they didn't fail. They actually went way above and beyond with basically yeah. how they've put the whole game together. For the most part, it's been like I still every time I think about it, I sit and go, "How did you like? How did you do that? How did you go from making Shadowlands to making this?" Like what? What did they start putting in the water? What? What? Um, like what? I guess what? Like design meetings did they have? What conversations did they have? Like, did someone go in and go right? Here's here's a handful of books and Twitter threads on how to design a game or how to you know, <laughs> you know here's here's how to. Re- I don't think they needed the books. And yeah, Twitter threads. but like you know the idea of like how did you flip your philosophy yeah, yeah. this way and then execute on your new philosophy correctly? Nine point one probably. Yeah. Nearly. Yeah. 
fucking destroyed the game. <laughs> yeah, the whole uh, like uh, if your life flashes before your eyes, you sort yeah. of you sort of uh, re- reconsider things a little bit. But then it's like the creative decisions are where the death from a thousand cuts kind of comes from, where it's like it's a male class doesn't have transmog in its actual form, and that is such a uh, like such a sharp, I guess contrast between the other three classes they made. Yeah. Because obviously monks, I know monks are very, very mixed. I know people didn't like them at the time. Were like, what's this? Kung Fu Panda bullshit. Uh, it's just, why is your wiser expansion so racist? Um, and also like the fantasy of monk has never really fits well into the game. And still doesn't because they kind of went and never bothered to make it do so. It's like, ha, funny panda drunkards. Sweet. Well done. Um, the tiger talks you all the time and he's annoying. That's basically the height of it. But like Death Knights and Demon Hunters. That's the freest shit of all time. It is. It's so free. But with the, like as well I say about um the them making creative decisions that were for them and not the audience. Yeah, th- they're and that's creating, very much they yeah. they went, what do we want to make? What do we want to make? And that the answer to that was Voker. It wasn't what do we want to make that people are going to really love? Because when they were like we're bringing Elden back for Legion, we're putting in the Legion, Demon Hunters. That's like the the convergence of what the devs definitely thought was cool as hell and you can tell because all the other diary stuff is really well realized and then all the players were like fuck yeah demon hunters i can fell rush and get disconnected 90 percent of the time for the next three expansions until they fix it in dragonflight probably um <laughs> but like you, you can feel like that just worked whereas the focus like yeah hey, here's a dragonflight uh, caster dragon You're like i get you needed to add a caster because you've only ever added melee mm-hmm. but it's like that's a that's a problem where like you you probably should have applied the the lens of I guess audience what the audience want more than the game design part of it. I yeah, think. I think I think the thing that they <clears throat> the thing they need to next realize is exactly what you pointed out, which is how do they actually find the things that they want to make that also fits a more broad uh, slice of their audience. Um, maybe part of Chris Metzen being there as a creative. Uh, consultant. I, I am. Um, I am assuming be that because he's creative consultant during like the beginning of production for eleven point oh. Yeah, for the world revamp. <laughs> so, I'm assuming that's them thinking. Well, okay. Number one, I assume that this is probably a discussion that's been going on for quite some time. So I, so. I don't think that they just went like, "Oh, pull the Matson lever." We didn't get sales. No, I think he was probably going to be coming on board anyway. Yeah, I imagine but, that's a long conversation yeah. of, right, Chris, how much are you willing to do for how much money? How much creative control are you willing to either take back or seed? Because it could go either way. Mm. Let's seed, C-E-D-E, as in leave them with it, so... It's, yeah, because he, yeah. he's not narrative, like he's you know he's not creative director. Yeah, he's he's clearly not like kicked in the door. Went, this is my game. Give me it back. Yeah, he's narrative I think consultant. It, we would we would we would feel that a little bit more. I have a feeling the narrative consultant uh, would say, "Hey, look at these old sketches of the tour and I did when I was like thirty years old. People liked them because they were cool. Look at the track there. Uh, <laughs> so." Hmm. I'm perhaps wondering, you know, how is he going to get a little bit of that? Oh, Dragonflight over Shadowlands? Absolutely. No, we think Dragonflight's a brilliant uh, expansion and really fun. Yeah. We're just uh, diagnosing why from a lot of the things that we're seeing, it doesn't really look like Dragonflight sold that well. Mm-hmm. Um, that, you know, that's essentially... Yeah, that's essentially it. So I, I'm assuming then he's going to try to be getting a little bit more of the actual... Warcraft back into it because it, I think it, it's fair to say if you look at that um, that CG they put out where it's so oh, it's it's the dwarf and she's going woohoo yippee hmm. and there's the troll also going woohoo yippee uh, it doesn't feel like Warcraft at all yeah like that trailer. Like, it feels like Warcraft when Razageth appears, but otherwise it completely doesn't feel like Warcraft um, in the way that Warcraft would historically, like, get people uh, pumped for something. Uh, I'm Again, I'm thinking of Warlords of Draenor, which sold really well. Legion, which sold really well. Cataclysm, which sold really well. Wrath of the Lich King, which sold really well. The Burning Crusade, which sold really well. Versus, woo, 
We we're Whee! having fun now. Dragons! Um, All the dragons are friends. And that's sort of tricky because it it does make sense that the dragons are friends. I knew all of that, and that's like totally grand for the story. It's just the public positioning of it's clearly not resonated with people. Like, normies haven't seen a banner ad with Alex Straza that says harness the power and thought, fucking hell, there's power for me to harness, I better click. God, don't get me started in those taglines. They're so bad. Rise above our ruin, horizons have been west. Oh, rise above that Garbage. was That was yeah, pretty cringe. Terrible. No, it's. That stuff's actually so cringe. Like, you know, in America, I had the Star Wars program. Oh, or like, you know, it makes like cheesy American acronyms sound cool. They're so bad. So video game tag taglines, don't do them. Except the fact they probably work because we live in nightmare land and we have invented Sad. the torment nexus, et cetera, et cetera. But no, there's, um, there's that weird thing, I think, where they have to make a decision. And that is, obviously, you could argue that by higher, by by being in contact with Chris, they have made the decision already. But it's like, do they continue to do what they want to do, what they think is their their product, their their game, their creative world, their universe, that they're going to go, okay, well... Because I think in a lot of how things are... I'm going to say retcon, but I'm going to expand the meaning of retcon to include uh, retrospective contextualization, because ret, contextualization starts with con. So I'm going to say retcon, because they, they've done a lot of the... That wasn't what you thought it was. That wasn't what you thought it was. And the worst of that was the jailer. Where that was just everything that's happened before. It was all him because he's the biggest and the smartest. And you're like, fucking fraud hack. Um, but the a lot of the recontextualization to me feels a lot like we're going to take... We're going to be less destructive now about what we were doing by trying to make this thing that already exists into uh, a different shape for us, for the new creatives who own it. They're being a little bit less destructive about it, trying to be a little bit more respectful to what it was. And they're doing a very good job of that largely. Yes. But it's still they're still molding it differently because they're a different set of people with different skill sets, different like different inspirations, different personalities, different basically everything. Because that's what happens when you hire a new team to make the same thing. And we talked about this at length a while ago, where it's just like do they imitate the old thing, but they don't understand it because it's not theirs? Or to make the new thing. And then what happens when you make the new thing and it doesn't do as well as the old thing did? You go, oh, do we like, do we try to go back and understand the old thing and move it towards that to try and get people back? Or do we like forge ahead with the new thing that's our new thing and see how it goes over time? And that's kind of the problem they need to, I guess the, uh, the creative decision I'm sure they're talking about consistently is like, how much of this do we need to bring back to Warcraft 3 versus how much of this can we make it Dragonflight, how much of this can be how much of this can be the emotional support dog as opposed to load of orcs oh, no, kill, take the emotional of, support dog out the back and shoot load it. Load of orcs killing each other. And that's the, a problem the more, with the people. More wizard, like, okay, one doesn't have to come at the expense of the other, I guess, but like sometimes yeah, you, you, would, you can feel when something <laughs> Wow feels very California now. Yeah. But yeah. that's that's because it yeah. is being made in California Shocking. by people obviously there's lots of people who've moved there for it but by people who live in California in tw the 2020s in the 2010s as opposed to people who grew up in California in like the 70s and 80s and, and like, I think what's 90s. weird is you know they, they'd probably hear us say that from their perspective and think wow they must be InfoWars fans yeah I know it's just uh, no actually changing um, this may be just to help anyone who maybe is in California who doesn't is maybe struggling with perspectives because maybe you know when you see California be dunked on, it's hacks at Fox News or hacks at Newsmax. I, I could, um, yeah, that definitely to, happens, like for sure. Oh, it does, yeah. But to be very clear, my uh, young progressive friends will roll their eyes at California now. Yeah, there's a little bit of so, uh, like, just to make it very clear that. This is not me and Matt, like, finding the right wing whistle and just going, beep! <laughs> no, no I, I would do a whistle, but I, I literally mm -hmm. can't whistle. Um, so, you know, that this is not some, like, weird right wing dog whistle thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's partially, like, the rest of the world. And, like, if, 
if my modern young pro progress, I, I say young, like same cohort as me, or like maybe a bit yeah, younger, yeah, you're you know, <laughs> young, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're becoming older now. Sad. Uh, but like, you know, if, if they kind of look at some of the creative decisions that come out of a lot of big California games, I'm like, oh my, uh, yeah. and, and for some reason, we all have this like weird feel of what it is, even though it's really hard to put yeah, into words, which, which gets even more insane when you play like Horizon Zero Dawn or Horizon Red West and go. This game was made in the Netherlands. Why is it a California game? And you go, oh, what's going on? That's the brain bending uh, yeah. one. Yeah, I imagine if you look at like a lot of the staff, there's probably people from like. But then, uh, how do I? I guess I'll just I'll. So I guess like totally, I'll, basically, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. not resonating. I think mega yeah. well. I'll, I'd say that is a problem specifically for California more than anything else because California is where a lot of media centralization happened with Hollywood in yeah. LA games with, with the games industry being there it's formed a cultural bubble that it's very hard to escape from both literally because that's where all the jobs are if you don't have a job you don't li li live so okay there you go so it's hard to literally escape but also it's so all-encompassing especially like we used to talk about this a while ago we're like when the whole point of the blizzard campus that's like life at Blizzard. That's different to job at Blizzard and life where you live. It's life at Blizzard. And that means you're going to be, unless you're like, okay, I should probably say on average, your Blizzard employees probably, well, maybe not now because of so much more remote work, but historically there would be, a, that's a good way to destroy my argument, Um There's a whole, uh, I actually literally lost my train of thought. It's the idea of the cultural bubble where you don't really see people outside of that. I think it happens worse in California because you don't get to see too many different perspectives from there because everyone you interact with is likely there. Obviously, the internet changes that to some degree, but it's like a it's a massive cultural force. It's hard to like get away with in a way. Yeah, or and get then I, away I think from, like sorry. they you know they do presentations with their developers where they you know they they don't actually let their developers shine at all because they put them in these round tables that are hmm. you know obviously some production team basically. <clears throat> like what some of our editors in their old jobs would have been doing. They got a bunch of them to come in and film them, be like, oh, wow, this person just made a shot or made a point. Okay, let's cut to this person nodding at them in agreement. That will reinforce to the audience that it's a good point. And, but now to all of us, we're just like, Ugh. Hmm. Ugh. no, I don't like this. Yeah, the, 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 What's so that, the ideal thing that people like has changed and they haven't changed that. Anyway. Yeah, like so the, the best way to have presented um, Dragonflight, and I, I just remember this because I think, yeah, it was like one of Jeremy Fiesel's first BlizzCons and everyone was just glowing because he just, just fucking stood there for 15 minutes and went bang, 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 bang content. Yeah. And, and people just thought, fucking hell, cool. Dude just got up on the stage, told us about a bunch of things in the game. Happy, happy. And in a way where they can, like, empathize with the person because, I mean, we all know how fucking terrifying it would be to get up on a stage and do that thing. Yeah. And, you know, they're like, their passion shines through. Um, I mean, similar for Ian. Like, even just seeing, like, the arc of, like, Ian being, like, a bit, you know, a bit more awkward early on, which, I mean, I'd totally be as well. And then, like, more confident Ian feeling like he's actually got good shit behind him. Mm. Um, you know, like, doing some of those. Like, remember, like, ah, oh, Legion comes out. Stuff's good again. They do a BlizzCon. The developers are like, oh yeah, Argus. And everyone's just like, ah! Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. We're excited! Mm. And and then Legion does really well. And like that's the sort of cultural moment that you can't get where you're like, and and so, so Matthew, yeah, you know, what were we really thinking we were going for the Drak Theor? Mm -hmm. Now you start mm -hmm. making your point. Yes. So with the Drak Theor, we were thinking- and Then you have to cut to me. Yeah, we were thinking it's something entirely new within the world of Warcraft that no one's ever really seen before. It was this idea of the the more the more lithe caster, the more lithe caster dragon. It's something that everyone expects a big beefy warrior dragon, but we have subverted their expectations. <sighs> it's of, it, it, it's unexpected yet inevitable. Wow. Yeah, I think that's a bit nodders. Like, yeah, obviously that's a, I'm that, so that's sorry, a, that's Cobra. a bit rude. I'm so it. sorry. And, oh yeah, again, yeah. like, this is not a shade on any of the people doing the talking or the nodding. Um, yeah, of course. The, the whole point of this bit is that as soon as me and Matt transition from natural speaking into he makes a point while I nod while the camera cuts, we then come across as some of the most embarrassing people on the planet. Yep. Like, Warcraft Arclight uh, Reef... 
Ar- Arc Rumble. Rumble, Arc Light, and the Rumble. Ar- Arc Light Rumble. Um, yes, Arc Light Rumble. Like, okay, it was a bit cringe because it was very tryhard, but you still felt a little bit of human soul in it because sure it was just this woman's very excited. Look at her go! Bloody hell, she's really giving it her all. Mm-hmm. Good. That would. I mean, this is cringe, but commitment for the beat, for, you know, to do the bit. Well done. Like, Arclight Rumble almost had a stronger developer presence than uh, Dragonflight did. It, and it's yeah. not because of the developers. It's because of the fucking production company, <laughs> basically. Yeah. yeah, I mean, KW saying compared to the FF14 producer live letter streams, and they're so boring. Just there, there's literally just here they are with some some like slides and some printouts of gear. Are like, yeah, there you go, work away. That yeah, they they don't even have the assets in OBS. They just print them in a sheet of A4 paper. I not yeah. like I don't know. Good if, I don't A4. know if that's a bit or if that's like a re- if there's a reason. No, I think it, I no, I think Probably it's just, just that. Just and like it's you know, it's not like it's good photo paper. No, it's just standard printer paper. Like here, yeah. here's the set, everyone. Hope you enjoy the set. Very good. Uh, here's yeah. the next set. Instead of being like, I'm going to click through my presentation. And it works. People like yeah. it. But the thing is, like, yeah, people like it. I said it's boring because, like, from from perspective of how they've made it, it's very boring. It's literally just Yoshi be sitting there and be like, all right, we're talking about next. Uh, right, so there's this. There's this, yeah, and can't give any details on the uh, trial because that's spoilers, but there's a trial. And then Paper cannot an crash. One. Paper can't crash. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's actually very true. Yeah, paper can't crash. Printers can crash, but you can just sort that out beforehand. Printouts are that we have all the technology, yeah. but let's not use it. That's it. Yep. Do you think Edward James almost is is doing a fucking PowerPoint presentation? No. There's going to be some someday, right? Someday. Maybe it'll really happen, or maybe you'll just dream this. Maybe I'll plant the seeds so you dream it later on. But they will have the printouts, and they'll have the corners cut from the printouts. <laughs> oh, I, I have a big, big fucking spurgy time then. Yep. Um, so, mm. basically, why we're thinking Dragonflight probably hasn't sold anywhere near as well as it could have. Cultural is, differences. Uh, yeah. It landed pretty weak on a cultural level. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, you know, for Americans who spend all of their day... Uh, I mean, it was, it's kind of weird because I can't exactly... You know, you kind of look at, like, the, the Roe v. Wade stuff and, like... It would hard to be in, like, I'll, I'll have to give a- anyone this and, like, any side of the political fence in America. It would be really hard to be in America and not be driven completely insane. Um, oh, yeah. And, like, now that our government and politics is, is you know, like, we're probably just, like, 20 years behind you. But the things are getting pretty insane here, Yeah, too. no, like, I feel like I've been driven insane. Oh, by, I'm being driven insane, by too. The, by living in the UK, especially a stone so from Ireland, we're, like, just cross the border, matches to it. But... Except for the was it six year and seven euro sandwich in Dublin, but like if if I feel like I've been driven insane about what's happening, being in the US must be actually like mm. no harm to you, must be a melt. Oh, awful! So no wonder they are making the big cuddly therapy expansion. Yeah. And you can feel all of the big cuddly great heart in it. Pure escapism, but escapism with soul. Um, and and that's the thing. Like we do feel like there's you know good soul and stuff. And again, the the yeah, point the, the, of today's stream yeah. has been working out not today's stream, of this little segment has been working out why it doesn't seem to be resonating with people um, as much. And this is from the perspective of two people who are trying to be objective uh, about that, trying to, not objective is not the right word, but you know, we're, we're trying to explore what the reasons could be anyway, hmm. even though we ourselves do really like the game and have literally not enjoyed WoW this much at minimum since Legion. Yeah. I would say I've actually enjoyed the game more uh, now than I did at Legion. Um... I've not enjoyed the game as much as Legion, but that was the game. I'll, I'll recognize that was a different time where I just sat and played it all day, basically. Yeah. So that was that was more enjoyable. But also, I very much enjoyed not playing the game for about a week. Or not not a full week, but, like, you know, for most of the week and, like, letting, like, World Crest roll over and stuff. Because, like, I don't want to play the game this week. Yeah, I don't feel bad. And then I, the game doesn't sort of kick the door down and go, why, why are you not playing me? And, like, shut up in the middle of watching Battlestar. They're like... To go now or you'll miss out. That's not the case. I'm like, eh, not missing anything. Yeah, so it's... I suppose it's that... Um, yeah, it's it's just that, like... Th- there's, a, there's, a, there's a frequency 
and they're happily on their own frequency, but it's not mm. being picked up by as many radios across the earth. That's a really um, weird analogy, but it's basically perfect. Yeah, it's more or less <laughs> perfect. Whereas, yeah, that had to do on the salt food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, and that's the thing I find like. I think we're over the point, but it's really hard to. It's hard. You can't really solve that. It's like, eh, you can solve it, but there's a, there's a sacrifice to solving that. Muscle, like yeah, it basically it means muscle sweat and explosions. Um, yeah. Now it's quite tricky because then you're like, oh wow, look look at this fucking moron. He just wants us to make a Michael Bay movie. He just um, well, he just wants the the Expendables in World of Warcraft, oh, which to be oh. fair, Cata Redridge is pretty much pretty good. Like Cata Redridge, pretty good. Um, so I'm not saying that, you know, exactly, but so I guess that's it. It's kind of weird because, you know, if you can kind of have all of the, oh yeah. So Marcus, I would agree with you. I think a lot of those Kata Azeroth quests were like too much. Yeah. Like I know everybody loves the ones that happen in the Badlands where you're like, oh, let's get some babes and, and drive a motorcycle. Ugh. They uh, kind of sucked. Yeah. As Matt just said, they kind of sucked. Um, like those, I think were breaking the world building. Those weren't feeling Warcraft. Um, maybe it was just them goofing off, but like the way they were integrated to the main storyline, like I, I thought that stuff was just stupid, um, right? Oh yeah, my hat's backwards in purpose story. Um, so I always thought that stuff was dumb, but like, what? Try pe Pepsi is advertising putting milk in Pepsi. I am, I am never going to put milk in Pepsi. That is. Oh, I actually kind of wanted to try that. Protein milk oh, in your Pepsi. That's not a bad show. Oh, hello. Bro pill. Um, yeah, so I, look, I guess that's probably it for most of this segment. I, I suppose oh. I'd cap it off by saying one of the things that's been very interesting to us, like even look at the views of this stream. It'd be really small, um, which maybe it would be a naturally so because really we're small. closer to Christmas. That's all right. Where are we at? 958. It's fine. Oh, no, that's really small. Um, no, like that is really small compared to the norm. And mm. it's really small compared to the norm even when... Dragonflight was like, you know, ah, um, video views really, really low. Um, you know, people, me and Tal, yes, and like we both did, uh, you know, sort of quicker ish turnaround videos talking about mm. the, the roadmap, which in many cases you would think this is like some of the most impactful news the game has had in a long time, and people don't give a shit. Um, and you kind of see that for like quite a few other things, and that's just saying to me, broad interests falling away. I think they're going to be able to build it back, though. See, that's that's the difference. 